I looked at my wife of five years and said, Aaron, it's him or me. No intermediate options. She sits next to my nominal boss, Plato Giannis, and holds his well-manicured hand until I speak. And then she took her hand away. An expression of confusion and fear appeared on her beautiful face. She shook her head in surprise, causing her blonde hair to glisten in the lamplight. Just for the weekend, on Monday everything will be back to normal. Can't you have some fun with Elle for now? Elle is Elle Logan, real name Ellen Johnson. She sits next to me and has been making very intense attempts to seduce me for the last few hours. She is a stunning woman with luxurious dark hair and one of the best bodies in the world, especially if you like curves, which I definitely like. There are also rumors that she is top class. This is all part of Plato's joke. When Aaron and I were invited to this island for a weekend, it was assumed that he just wanted to get to know me better. I am a famous author, and he bought the corporation that published my work. This happened about three months ago. But in fact, the whole weekend was organized so that Plato could have sex with my wife. I am an average writer, author of detective novels and thrillers. My hero is Rick Rocker. Sometimes he solves the mysteries of locked rooms, and sometimes he dives off a cliff to escape crazy people. He also has a varied and interesting sex life, putting beautiful women to bed in no time. He is a martial arts expert and trained assassin. All in all, a jack of all trades. He is fantasy wrapped in a thin layer of reality, and the books sell well. But the publishing house has several more important and better selling writers. I just have a beautiful wife who attracted Plato. They met at a gala dinner and dance that Plato, Mr. G, threw for his stable of writers and editors. The party was impressive, and Erin was impressed. She was especially impressed when she and Mr. G danced to several musical numbers. He is polished, 10 years older than 28-year-old Erin. He has long dark hair and is a large man. As I watched them dance, I saw that he also moved deftly. When the group took a break, they both returned to our table and Mr. G said, You have a wonderful wife, Donald, and she dances beautifully. I nodded. The lack of response from me seemed to stump him for a second. Then he said, Well, it's time for me to take care of the other guests. It was a pleasure, madam. Aaron smiled and replied, Mutually, Plato. I looked at her. No doubt she moved too quickly from Mr. G to Plato. I asked, impressed with my boss? Yeah, he's just adorable. And she gave me a lecherous grin. Well, let's see whose wife he snags next, huh? She turned out to be the wife of one of the editors. And during the evening, three more. All this happened a month ago. My name is Donald Lake. There is no nickname, height about six feet, weight 169 pounds, curly brown hair, blue eyes, 30 years. I am in good physical shape and athletic. Erin is also in good shape. She practices fencing. It is a sport of skill and coordination. And it was there that I met her, at a fencing lesson that she taught. I was doing the usual research for Rick, who was supposed to be fighting with swords in the next book. In the book, The Adventurer, I always do extensive research before writing an adventure book. This is one of my main selling points. Rick doesn't do anything that I haven't tried. I made my way to becoming a writer up a steep staircase. He graduated from high school and did not continue formal education. Even then, and in fact, since I was 10, I realized that I was a writer. Throughout school, I wrote story after story. Two stories I wrote in high school were published, albeit in obscure literary magazines. I considered myself a serious writer until I had to work for a living after finishing school. I worked as a car mechanic and I liked it, but it didn't pay that much. And I started writing thrillers and Miracle of Miracles, one of them sold. Then another one and another. My current publisher signed me after I sent them my first Rick Rocker novel. They gave me an editor, Sally Baker. We immediately found a common language with her. She is a sweetheart but deeply married. She had children in elementary school at the time. It was while working on the second rocker book that I met Erin. I finished the book after receiving advice from her about a sword duel, and we went on several dates, which soon ended in bed. Everything in bed was fantastic. We hit it off right away, and I know that both of us were delighted with it. 
When we met, Erin was working in her own music store. She is not a rich woman and was able to survive the initial stages of starting a business, thanks to loans from a family trust. In one section of the store, all kinds of instruments were sold. And in the other, there were recordings of music of all kinds and sheet music. So fencing is just a hobby. When we got married, she was 23 years old and I was as happy as I thought it was possible to be happy. We had plans for children and very soon. But my publishing house was sold to Mr. G or Plato, as Aaron says. One day, Aaron came home excited. Donnie, next weekend, Plato invites us to his island. I stared at her. You mean, Mr. G? How more precisely, why are you telling me this and not him? I ran into him last week. We had lunch. Then I gave him a tour of the store. Today he called with an invitation. He says he wants to get to know the writers better. I'm sure he will be in contact with you soon. But my question is, has he been in contact with you? And how many of you has he been in contact with? She turned slightly pale. Nothing like that happened, Donnie. You're paranoid. No, not paranoia. Tell me why you didn't mention lunch and shopping until today. This was last week, right? She turned away. Okay, Donald, he kinda hit on me. I blew him off, but I didn't say anything because I thought you'd get in trouble. He is the owner of the company after all. And now you seem delighted with the idea of visiting him on the island. I've heard about this place. How many more people will be there? Just you and me. He has a special friend who will be there too. Well, and the staff, of course, all in order to get to know you better. It seems to me that this is in order to get to know you, all of you. How touching. I can handle this. Are you sure you can handle it? Stop it. It will be great. You'll see. I'm going to decline the invitation, Aaron. It's too dangerous for us. Donnie, no, please. We will have fun. Sorry. She sulked for the rest of the evening. The next day, I called the main office and asked for Mr. G to speak. And he called me back 15 minutes later, saying, Hello, Donald. Looking forward to our weekend on the island. I refuse, Mr. G, I don't feel comfortable. It seems my wife knew about it, but not me. In fact, I think she had lunch with you, but she didn't tell me about it. She said that you were pestering her, and she was afraid that I would react badly if I told everything to me, and she's right. Donald, I actually appreciate Erin on several different levels. She is very attractive, but I can ignore it. She is an entrepreneur like me, and you are one of my most profitable writers. I just want to get to know you both better. Sorry, Mr. G will not work. It's a shame that you feel that way, Donald. I wish you would change your mind. I'll keep the weekend open. At this point, we separated. About three hours later, as I was finishing the next Rick book, I got a call from my agent, Brock Levin. Don, you declined Mr. G's invitation. Why? How do you even know about this, Brock? The vice president of sales called me. He insists that you should go. Otherwise what? They may under-advertise the new book which will cost you dearly, and me since we both lit from interest. Did he threaten this? Not directly, but the threat was made. This guy plays a tough game. I said, I'll contact you, Brock. After hanging up, I emailed Sally the end of the new book with some instructions. Later she called and we discussed everything. In the meantime, I studied Plato Janus and his island very intensively. The island was called Hedonism. In Greek, it means pleasure, pleasure island. As I delved deeper, I found several stories of sexual outrage on the island. And there was mention of two cases of divorce, where the island was mentioned as the basis. But these stories were published in gossip. There were several photographs of Mr. G with women. Two of them were married. All this alarmed me. I found a picture of this place on Google Maps. I got acquainted with the whole place. The island is two miles long and about one mile wide, located off the coast of North Carolina, among several islands where people go to play golf and enjoy beach holidays. The island faces south and is sheltered from the elements. It has two piers and several buildings, including a large house. There are tennis courts and a swimming pool. Why have a pool if there are great beaches? 
I downloaded detailed photographs of this place and compiled them into a topographic map. It seemed to me that to get there and back, you would need a decent boat or seaplane. I have neither one nor the other, but I know people who have both. That evening, Friday, Erin returned home on time. Entering the house, she looked joyful. For dinner, I had a large chicken salad and white wine. She got up to change her clothes. While they were eating, Erin said, I heard that you may have changed your mind about not going to the island. I looked at her. Where? Plato said that you can change your mind. At lunch? No, silly. He's in New York, and we're here in good old Virginia. He called me. He has an apartment in McLean. How do you know he's in New York? Don't turn your paranoia on me, Donnie. He mentioned this. He said that if we agreed, he would order his plane to take us from the National Airport. But we won't agree, Aaron. I haven't changed my mind. Crap, Donald Lake, you are so stubborn. Aaron, you can go. I won't be able to have a good time there because I'll worry that we'll end up getting divorced. Are you going to sleep with him? I won't go without you, Don. How can you? If I go alone, anything can happen. And it will happen. When you return, we will never sleep together again. Donnie, I can't say I'm not attracted to him. But you and I are still hotter than ever, so I wouldn't take that risk. I won't, so I believed you. Do you believe it? Don't believe me at all. Now is the time when my trust tank is almost empty. She quickly got up from the table, spilling the wine. Crap, look what you made me do. I started laughing at her. She realized how stupid that sounded and joined me. This turned into hugs and kisses, which led to a trip upstairs. It took a whole hour. The unpleasant topic receded. As we lay in bed, Aaron said, I won't risk this for some billionaire. I swear, I noted that she seemed to assume that we would go to the island after all. Otherwise, what risk is she talking about? And said, okay, then it's decided. She tensed, but she didn't say anything. I asked, why are you so eager to go on this trip? Only the truth, not bullshit. She didn't answer for quite some time. Then she said, it seems exciting to be with such an important and influential guy. Sorry, I didn't mean with, but only communicate you. Aaron, I studied it. He was born rich. Of course, he made a lot more money himself, but he had a huge heat start. And he chases women, just like you. Okay, well, I still believe that everything will be good and fun. I thought about it. We were ready to start trying to have children. If Aaron was going to stray, now would be the time for her to do it. And if so, I thought I would like to find out about it now and not when we have children. I used to love her. She is smart, lively, and damn sexy. But it also had to be truthful, and now I doubted that. Okay, Aaron, we can go. But I warn you, if you end up under this guy, we're screwed. There will be no turning back, understand? Yes, understand. I'm so glad we can do this. I decided that the warning I had just given was the last. Either she is a worthy wife or she is not. Temptation will become a test. Time will show. The next day, I accepted the invitation and made contingency arrangements with my friend. I'd also check the availability of cellular communications on the island. It's there. But just in case, I took my satellite phone with me. The small plane we flew in from National landed at a small airport where we were met by a black man named Simon. He took us to the pier, where we boarded a boat with a nice cabin and a powerful engine. The boat was driven by another guy, Charlie, and after about 40 minutes we docked at the island. Aaron and I spent time looking at the ocean and other islands. Simon told us where we were and outlined what there was to do on the island. He is a nice guy, bigger than me and muscular. He has a wonderful smile and laugh. As they approached the pier on the north side of the island, Aaron was in front and Simon said, You don't seem very happy with the trip. Mr. Lake, call me Don. I have doubts. How long have you been working on the island? Six years to Mr. G. Therefore, I expect you to know why I have doubts. Then why did you come? If you're that worried, to see what happens. You're also his bodyguard, aren't you? Yes, in case something happens. Well, he's a big guy. I'm sure he can take care of himself. Yes, you could say I'm here just in case. 
once or twice things didn't go well. But in those days I was not needed, looking at you maybe. I'll be ready, I value my work. Are you armed? No, well I have a knife. But knives are everywhere. Are there guns on the island? No, not allowed. I assume it's in the memo you received. Yeah, but I don't really trust her. I'm not a very trusting guy these days. No firearms, I warn you, you won't need it, no matter what happens. The boat was pressed tightly against the pier, and Simon and the young man on the pier tied it up. Simon gave Aaron his hand, and I jumped off the boat. Simon looked slightly worried about this. I accompanied Aaron towards the big house as Simon had indicated. Mr. G met us when we arrived at the house. He was dressed casually, wearing swimming trunks and a sleeveless shirt. With him was L, the most beautiful woman in the world. I looked at her as I found out who else would be there with us. That's how I found out that she was actually Helen Johnson from Jonastown. She was the semi-official mistress on the island, as well as in several houses owned by Mr. G. There was a time when she could be seen in the company of other noble men, not so often anymore. Mr. G appears to have received an exclusive agreement, at least in some way. Mr. G extended his hand to shake, and Ella hugged Aaron. G then hugged Aaron, and Ella hugged me. She smelled and felt great. During the hug, her lips touched my ear. We were taken to a large room and offered drinks. It was one o'clock in the afternoon, and we had a light snack on the plane. But a small buffet was laid out for us. I gave up drinking and took sparkling water. Aaron took the wine. They both ate a small amount of food from the buffet. While we were doing this, Mr. G asked me about the new book. I sent it to Sally last week. I think it's on time. Yeah, I know you're always on time, Donald. Sometimes even earlier, he smiled. Ella asked, what are you speaking about? I've read all your books. It's a thriller with rock climbing and flying small planes and a love interest. Ella exclaimed, cannot wait. Maybe I can watch it sooner. Mr. G supported, we'll see dear, and turned to Aaron. My dear, how are things in the music business? Everything is fine. Maybe I should have said crescendo. There was some giggling, I said. I think Marjorie's new book will sell well. Marjorie is Marjorie Wright, who wrote serious fiction but still sold a lot of books. Yes, she is moving up our sales list. But Donald, she is far from you and Morgan. Morgan, who goes by the name Belle Starling, is a romance novelist. He, she is the number one salesperson in our company. Morgan just bakes them, I said mockingly. Mr. G laughed. It is to my advantage. I looked at your contract last week. It is to my advantage. I looked at your contract last week. You owe us another book. Yes, this is true. I think about Christmas, nine months, but work on it is already in full swing. L said, are you changing topics? Yes, sometimes thrillers need a rest. Then I switched. The next book is The Mystery of an English Village. I researched this when we were there last summer. L said, Plato spoke very flatteringly about your sales. Each book sells better than the previous one. Aaron chimed in, it gathers a readership. For our future, my store makes normal profits. L said, but do you have family money? Yes, I have them. So far, after the store started working, I didn't touch them. Mr. D jumped up. If you finished lunch, let's go for a swim. And he ran out the door. L said, if you have swimsuits, I will show you to your room and you can change. The three of us stood up and Ella led us into a large double bedroom. She closed the door. We changed into swimsuits. I had regular swimming trunks, but Aaron wore a skimpy pink bikini. I said, this is too much, huh? Who are you trying to impress? I just want to look good. Elle is so beautiful, no more than you, dear. She didn't like my tone, but she held her tongue. When we came down, Elle was wearing an electric blue bikini just as small as Aaron's. I was completely in love in both. We got out and walked to the beach on the south side of the island. There was a wooden path. Mr. G was already in the water swimming behind the breakwaters. Aaron said, I don't want to swim that far. Me too, Ella shuddered as she said this. I dove into the surf, surfaced and swam to where Mr. G was cutting through the water with his crawl. I joined him. 
He was a good swim cutting through the water with his crawl. I joined him. He was a good swimmer for a man of his size. But my body type was more suitable for water, and I easily kept up with him, sometimes changing strokes. I kept swimming until he got tired. He headed back, and I followed him. When we swam to the shore, a large wave knocked him off his feet. I walked up to him and picked him up. He spat out seawater and sand. I held him tightly and we walked out. I saw that his legs were like wet noodles, probably because he had overextended himself in a swimming competition with me. But he quickly came to his senses and pulled away from my help. I'm fine. This wave just took me by surprise. We approached the women lying on sun loungers in the sun. And I asked, who wants to swim? Ella stood up immediately. She raised her hand, causing her top to slip slightly. I, and she ran to the surf. I looked at Aaron. She shook her head. Then I ran after Elle. The view from the rear was impressive. She dove into the surf like an Olympian and swam out beyond the breakwaters. I followed her. She swam better than Mr. G. I was amazed by this. We swam next to each other for some distance, and she shouted, let's turn, which is what I did. The flash of flesh interested me. I let her get about four meters ahead of me and watched her from the side. She turned over and floated on her back. Her breasts swayed in and out of the water. She was an absolutely amazing woman. Backstroke was my specialty, so I joined her, swimming alongside her. We swam some distance, and then she said, I've had enough, and swam to the shore. I waited a moment to look at her from behind. When I emerged from the surf, Aaron and Mr. G were nowhere to be seen. But Elle was looking straight at my tight-fitting swimming trunks. She said, what are you, Superman? I laughed. There's only one way to find out. She took a step towards me. Then she stopped, saying, we can't do this here. No matter how much I wanted, she turned and ran. On land, she was not as fast as in water. I easily caught up with her, and we went out onto the veranda. Ours were nowhere to be seen. I wondered if this had already happened. Elle asked, so do you really do what you write? Yes, well, I mean, I can't jump between buildings, but I'm trying to figure out how believable Rick can do such things. L stared at me. Before this look, my erection disappeared, but she returned as she expected. She was a woman with power. I said, L, fuck off. I am married to a wonderful woman and would like to keep it that way. I'm asking as a favor, don't. L laughed, a tongue-tied writer. My God, I said, let's see what these two are up to, shall we? Does this matter to you? Yeah, please, L. I want you to understand that I won't be sleeping with you this weekend, whatever Aaron decides to do. If they get to that point, I'll leave, and most likely I will long regret what I just said, I smiled. I'm warning you, Donald, it's not easy to shake me off my tail. She entered the house. I waited a few minutes before following her. When I went upstairs to change clothes, I saw no one. But when I entered our room, the shower was already running. As soon as I heard it, it stopped, no votes. Erin opened the door, wrapped in a towel. She gasped when she saw me and asked, Has L already got you? No, please understand, Erin, I'm not going with L. I hope you don't go with Mr. G either. We talked about this. The situation remains the same. What were you two doing while we were swimming? He showed me the swimming pool and the tennis court, and downstairs is the gym, and no sex. I didn't believe that he could be, because it would be too risky. The tennis court and downstairs is the gym, and no sex. I didn't believe that he could be because it would be too risky. They had no idea how long L and I would be gone, and I was sure that they were watching us for some time while we were swimming. No, he was a gentleman, great. But sooner or later he will come for you, and you know it. Yes, and she will come for you. He has as much chance of getting me as she has of getting you, she grinned. This is not very comforting, but I won't, and you better not do that. Otherwise what? We already talked, nothing changed. Drinks and snacks at five, we have time for love. And she dropped the towel. I admit, I was still on edge because of L, so I attacked Aaron with genuine zeal, and she reciprocated my feelings. When we finished, we realized that the windows were open. Aaron said, well, 
Never mind. After all, we are married. I looked out the window. Elt was sitting on a sun lounger about six meters away from us. She looked up and smiled. She waved her hand and then reached for her shorts. I moved away from the window. Erin noticed that I was hard again and stared at me. Then she looked out the window. She stood spellbound for some time. There was a groan from outside. Erin turned to me again saying, My God, Donnie, forget about yourself. She can have me. I can give up on you. I will not give up. Erin laughed at me. You have to beg her to give up. Otherwise, you have no chance. I've already done this. It doesn't seem to work. I guess Plato gave her a task, so he can have me. It's all so strange, but you have to admit, it keeps your interest. Aaron, I promise you that I won't do this. Although now you have helped me a lot, she looked at me. I was still erect. Certainly, we can have sex at least every two hours. This should help, maybe. We went down to the main room in casual clothes. For me, it's docker shorts and a collared shirt. Erin put on a dress and let her hair down and high-heeled sandals. No doubt she looked sexy. When we arrived, Mr. G was drinking beer. He said, Hey Donald, how was your swim with L? It was great. Mr. G, she is a talented swimmer. This is just one of the many talents she has. Call me Plato. Fine. Famous name. I like it. He was a famous guy. My father, rest his soul, loved reading about him. Elle came in, she was also wearing a dress, and she was also wearing heels. The dress seemed modest, but on her it was not modest. I'm sure Aaron felt a little insecure, and as I understand it, it was part of the game. Ella had to outshine Aaron, who in turn would try to assert herself by getting Plato for herself. I moved closer to Aaron and put my arm around her shoulders. Plato said, there's wine, cocktails, beer, and some pretzels. Pretzels are my favorite. As he said this, he was eating one of them. The four of us chatted for a while. Ella then took me to show the house. He was impressive. The gym has excellent equipment. I asked, does Plato use this? He lifts weights. She pointed to the bench where the barbell was installed heavy. I slid onto the bench under the barbell, carefully removed it from the racks, and made five swings, and then he put it back. L stood right above me, staring as best she could. And then she said, he only makes three, then he rests. She began to breathe heavily. I lifted the barbell and did eight more reps. Then he put her in her place, saying, everyone has their own strengths, and you have so many of them. Do you know what my role should be this weekend? Seduce me so Plato can take care of Aaron. Yes, this has happened before. I always complete a task, even if it is usually not very pleasant. But you'll be more than pleasant, I think. She gave me a killer smile. If I start begging you, will you stop? I was actually serious when I said this, but she seemed to think I was joking. No, but I will enjoy seeing you beg. She walked up the stairs. I waited for my erection to subside and stood up. The three of them huddled together in the living room and talked. When I entered, they fell silent, after which Plato said, Have something to drink. Donald, beer maybe. I looked at the bar, walked over to it, took out a bottle of Corona and opened it. The rest had wine. We chatted a little more. Then I asked, Have you finished discussing your plot, or should I leave? This caused an awkward silence. Ella silently watched the other two. Mostly Aaron. Aaron looked at Plato, and he said, so no secrets. I at that moment Simon came in and announced dinner. We went into the deaning room, where dishes were laid out on the buffet table. It was a family form of service. We sat at one end of a large table. They poured water, but I drank my beer and didn't drink water. Breaking the conversation, he said the tense a situation I had created, and we chatted amicably about politics and baseball. Plato was a Yankees fan. Aaron and I rooted for the Orioles and Nationals. Elt liked pirates and was from Jonastown. Simon served dessert, tiramisu. I missed mine. Plato seemed to notice this. Don't eat dessert? Great, I have to keep my waist in check. Bah, you have no fat in your body. I saw you when you were swimming. You don't drink water, only beer. Plato, 
as I already told my wife. Before we came here, my reservoir of trust is empty. Can you blame me? Aaron said, do you believe that they will drug you with something forbidden? This is just crazy. Don't be like that, Donald. I smiled and pushed Plato a glass of water in tiramisu. Eat and drink, buddy. Plato sat with a stony face. Then he said, Simon, when Simon appeared, Plato said, please clear the table. Simon saw what happened to the arrangement of water and dessert. He picked up what was my glass of water and my uneaten tiramisu and carried them away. El said, let's go to the courtyard. There will be music and we can dance. Aaron and Plato remained silent. I stood up and gave El my hand. He took her to the patio. When we got there, she turned to me. You really blamed him for the food and water. Do you actually believe that he will slip you something? And you? Maybe, I wouldn't think so. But he took neither one nor the other, and he asked his boyfriend to take them away. The other two came out and soft music started playing. I walked up to Aaron, took her by the elbow, and led her away from Plato and into the open area. We danced. She usually dances well, but at first she was shy. Although then I relaxed. She pressed herself close to me and whispered in my ear, I love you, Donnie, always. I love you too, Aaron. We danced on. The music ended, and we sat down at a table with Plato and Elle. Then the music began again, and Elle stood up, extending her hand to me. She took me to the floor. We danced. I saw Plato dancing with Aaron. Elle may have been the world's best distraction. With her sweet, subtle scent and the curves of her body, she put me into some kind of trance. Every time she worked on me, I was immediately delighted. And this time, too, I saw Plato's hands on Aaron's butt, and I didn't see her pushing them away. I pulled away from L, walked the short distance to Aaron and Plato, and just stood there and looked at them. Aaron saw and tried to move away from Plato. He continued to keep his hands on her ass. She lightly pushed him on the chest and said, I don't want problems, Plato. Let go. He let go, but he took her hand and led her back to the table. Ella came back after me and we sat down. She was very close to me. Aaron held Plato's hand as they sat next to each other. Plato said, I'm very disappointed in you, Donald. Ella is a fantastic lover. She will give you one of the most powerful and delightful experiences of your life and yet you are depriving her of this chance. I have a wife, no trading. This is how we came to what was discussed at the very beginning. I turned to Aaron and said, either he or I, no intermediate options. She removed her hand from his, but she looked at me and said, it's only for the weekend. On Monday, everything will be back to normal. Can't you have some fun with Elle for now? I looked at her closely. And you will do it? No kidding, yes or no? Even if it means it's over between us? No, I don't understand why it should mean that, but I won't. I extended my hand to her, and she took it. I pulled her towards me and gave her the hottest kiss I could muster, running my hands up and down her body. And then he pulled away. Tears came to my eyes. I breathed out the words that nearly killed me. The very fact that you would agree to have sex with this guy means that everything is over between us. It's all over between us. I turned and walked towards the stairs. She screamed, no, Donnie, no. I got to the top of the stairs, grabbed my bag that I had packed earlier, and walked out the backfire escape. I made the call and ran into the darkness sobbing. While I was running, I still heard screams. About 20 minutes later, I heard a plane. He splashed down near the southern dock and swam up to me. My buddy Todd Jacobs was flying it. I was walking towards him when Plato and Simon appeared behind me. Plato shouted, No, you idiot. You can't escape. You should stay here and calm your wife down. He rushed at me. I was already at the pier. Plato was uncontrollable and in no condition to fight. Simon stayed away, perhaps because Todd had a gun pointed at him. I threw Plato into the water. He floundered there, shouting, You're fired, asshole, do you hear me? fired. I boarded the plane and Todd taxied. We flew to a small lake near Dulles. He had a car there for me. I paid him for the service and went home to Alexandria. The road was dark and lonely. Our house was also dark. I entered it. I looked around. 
photos of us in happier times, photos of our relatives. I was shocked and just sat in the chair staring into space. That's how I fell asleep. At eight in the morning, I was awakened by the sound of a car outside. I looked out and saw Erin getting out of some rental car. She carried her bag to the door, unlocked it, and went inside. I stood and looked at her, and she stood motionless, looking at me. She looked terrible, probably no better than me. She said, in my entire life, I've never messed up like that, and I never will again, never. I don't want to lose you, Donnie. I shrugged. Aaron, what did you think would happen when you decided to let Plato use you? Did you think that I could not notice this because of L? I was stupid, Donnie, so stupid. Well, tell me, did you and Plato set all this up? She looked down. Not really. He suggested that when we get there, there might be a substitution. And to be honest, I foresaw this in advance. I thought I would say no, and that would be the end of it. But you didn't say no. You said yes, only if you go with L. I saw how much you wanted her. You were on edge being around her. And then do you think we'd rekindle our marriage and have kids and all that? When we both knew that we couldn't trust each other, I saw it as a sideshow, when we both would have an exceptional experience. I smiled. I can understand why you thought my experience with L would be top-notch. But why did you think that Plato would be better than me? He excited me. He is older and stronger. He knew what to do to get me, I think. I never thought he would be better than you, just different. So Aaron, how do I know this won't happen again? There are still many guys like Plato in the world, and he is still around. I didn't mean to cheat, Donnie. Everything was right in front of you. I just thought you would agree. Now, well, that is, you refused her. So I know you would never agree since you turned her down. Yes, well, I do not know. To me, you are not the woman I'd met and married. She wouldn't move to be seduced by some other guy. Donnie, can we please, can we see what happens next? And you know we always had great sex. We both miss it. We can continue like this while you spend your time not trusting me. She stood up and took off all her clothes. I thought about turning away, but he didn't. She led me upstairs. The only thing we have always had, and probably always will have, is complete sexual compatibility. As soon as we get into bed, we always get together, so I let her go home. Ten years later, I picked up the kids from the school bus. It was 3.15. Jessica is eight and Robert is six. Helen, who does not yet go to school, is three years old. I was a stay-at-home writer, but I had a good woman coming to help, and I had the opportunity to write. It took over a year before I trusted Erin enough to let her come off the pills. But when she did, our sex life took off. The thought that I had knocked her up excited us greatly. I closed my contract with my previous publisher, Sally, and I moved on to something else. The first book I wrote was about adventures on an island. Everything was close to the truth. Well, so be it. I had to hang from the plane's float before getting on board after I beat up Simon and his henchmen. Well, and also, the character's wife was drugged with illegal substances so that she would want the villain. But the villain was thrown into the ocean and all that. The book sold a huge number of copies, and I got a movie deal that also included my three previous books. Plato could not complain about half-truths in the new book, where he was cast in the role of Socrates. If he did, he would be burdened with the truth of what happened. Aaron now has two stores. They earn some money. I earn a lot. Before I fully accepted her back, she signed a post-nuptial agreement. It affects both of us. No infidelity. Now the school year has begun, and when I was driving the two older ones home, a car drove up to our entrance. This is a small red sports model. Out came a remarkable pair of legs, followed by the rest of the most beautiful woman in the world. Helen smiled and waved to the children. They ran up to her shouting, Aunt Helen, Aunt Helen. She hugged them and began to fuss around. Young Helen greeted her at the door as she entered the house. I poured her a seltzer, her favorite drink, and said, Erin will arrive soon. I prepared a high-calorie salad, and everything is ready in your room. But that's a completely different story. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. 
Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.